What's up, Wanderers? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you an awesome Washington road trip on the stunning Mountain Loop Highway. But before we do that, make sure to smash that like button if you love road trips, and don't forget to subscribe to see more itineraries and adventures. So buckle up and let's hit the road. Starting in Granite Falls, which is just over an hour from Seattle, the Mountain Loop Highway is officially 55 miles long and takes about two hours to travel in one direction. From Granite Falls, it swings out eastward to skirt the perimeter of the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest before it boomerangs back to Darrington. My first stop on this road trip was just 15 minutes from the start of the Mountain Loop. It's called the Old Mill at Treehouse Place at Deer Ridge. This adorable cabin is a perfect blend of rustic charm and some modern comfort. I loved that it was super cozy and had this giant tub next to a fireplace and a hot tub out back that I thoroughly enjoyed but forgot to film. So the first stop on the mountain loop is the Big Four Ice Caves. These natural ice formations were sculpted by ancient glaciers creating this awesome permanent ice cave. It's accessible by an easy 2.4 mile hike. The caves are definitely a unique stop in the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. This is so rad, I love this spot. What a neat, what a neato place. The ice patterns are really beautiful and you'll likely hear a bunch of rumbling from ice fall. So a word of caution, this area has significant avalanche danger because of those perfectly surrounding high peaks and people have been hurt entering the caves due to ice fall. So this is your word of warning to use caution, stay back from them when there's lots of snow present and understand your limitations. I'm not kidding on this one. There have been injuries, so proceed with caution. Next up is Heather Lake, which is a great day hike with panoramic views of Mount Pilchuck. It covers 4.4 miles and 1,200 feet in elevation gain through the forest. The trail is really rocky when it's not covered in snow, um, but there's lots of spots at the lake to take a break or have a picnic. I visited during the fall, but from what I know, this place gets covered in wildflowers in the spring. For the fire tower enthusiasts, Mount Pilchuck Lookout is a highlight I have to stress that you cannot miss. And sad news, I lost the footage here. Uh, don't be mad at me, I'm learning. But I still have my phone clips, so you'll get the idea. Standing at 5,421 feet, the trail to the summit is challenging, but also incredibly rewarding. You get views of the Cascade Mountains, dense forests, rocky outcrops, it's an adventure. The top has spectacular 360 degree views that is breathtaking on a clear day. I went up for a sunrise hike and made some coffee at the top and now I'm convinced this is the only way to do Mount Pilchuck Lookout. And before we move on, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and hit that like button because it super helps me out. Okay. If you're planning to extend your road trip, Verlo Campground is a fantastic option for an overnight stay. This campground has well-maintained sites, stunning natural surroundings, and sits right along the river if you like fishing. It has both tent sites and RV hookups and is a great home base to explore the Mountain Loop Highway. Just keep in mind that its open season is from April to late September, so no fall or winter camping there. The highway itself is a beautiful drive. Mountain views, several overlooks and pull-offs to stop at, and plenty of primitive campsites along the river when you get to the gravel. And I forgot to mention that, there are several miles when you approach Darrington that are gravel road. But I didn't find it too bad, I was just busy taking in the views and it wasn't a big deal. Another iconic spot is Goat Lake. This hike is amazing in the fall, but the road leading up to it is covered in potholes, so be prepared for that. 
It's a long 10 miles round trip, but the elevation gain is pretty moderate at only 1600 feet. I highly recommend this one in the fall because the crystal clear lake surrounded by the fall foliage is just mwah, chef's kiss. You can also backpack in and camp here and there's no permit required. Just please remember to respect leave no trace and set up your camp on a durable surface at least 200 feet from the lake. And finally, the North Mountain Fire Lookout. Now, this lookout is not technically on the mountain loop, but it was close enough and I just had to include it. It had epic sunset views over Darrington, Washington. When it's clear, you can see the Puget Sound to the west. In the Eastern Valley, you can see the Sauk River. And Whitehorse Mountain stands out prominently across the valley. And I had the most epic and unexpected experience here. I seriously almost cried with happiness. All right, the camera won't pick it up, but my phone can. <laughs> Total blackness. Oh, holy crap. The aurora is happening tonight. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm so stoked! And that's a wrap on our epic Washington road trip along the Mountain Loop Highway. If you're looking to explore the beauty and history of Washington, this road trip should definitely be on your list. It begins just over an hour outside of Seattle, so it's super accessible, and it has a ton to see and explore. So thanks for joining me on this adventure. If you stuck around, don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel guides and road trip inspiration. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to do this Washington road trip, and I will see you on the next wandering.